Hey there guys, welcome back to the channel. Hey, how much power do you think that dyno just made? I want you to go in the comments right now, tell me how much power you think I made in the dyno right there. Obviously I'm gonna tell you and show you at the end of the video, uh, but yeah, I would like to, let's see your guesses. So this is my truck. This is my tow truck known as Ruby around the shop, known as Claw at my house, two names. I'll tell you more about that in a minute. But this is like my truck that I built um, with the help of Josh and Meyer and all the guys here at the shop to be my personal daily tow vehicle. I tow my camp trailer with my family in this truck. I tow dirt bikes. Uh, when I go racing motocross, anything he's towed, I use this truck and it does phenomenal. It's also a good little hot rod. Uh, as you've seen in some of these past videos, I take this thing to the airstrip for the airstrip drag races and it does very, very well. Um, I have beaten and been faster than most vehicles there. As a matter of fact, the only vehicles faster than me has been Josh's and Myers race vehicles. Now this is on a terrible surface at a drag strip, story may change, but on a terribly unprepped track, I've yet to come across a street vehicle that has, can hang with my big, huge mega cab truck. I know they're out there and there's plenty of trucks and cars in the world that would destroy me. I get that, but not around here. So around here, I have been able to be the fastest guy on a street, um, tow my truck, tow my camp trailer, tow my dirt bikes, and it's quiet. I've kept the stock muffler, so it's a pleasure to drive. There's no drone. Um, it's just been a, it's a great truck and we're going to destroy it pretty much is what's going to happen. So there's an event coming up in October that Josh has been telling me all about and I've been really tempted to go and I've decided I'm going to do it. It's the all truck challenge. Last year was known as King of Streets, uh, King of the Street. And Josh went to it. He went out there and he had a great time. He blew up an engine. He had to swap a motor all night long. He His truck on the dyno, big fire. Ball. It was a real, real battle form out there, but he said it was super, super fun. And I need to go. So I'm going to go. So in order to go, I need a little bit more power than my truck has. So we're going to put this thing on the dyno, show you guys what it does. Me and Josh are going to talk about what is in this build? I get a lot of questions in the comments about this truck because it's such a great utility vehicle. It's fast, 
It tows great, it's reliable, starts every day, doesn't leak oil. It's awesome. And I built it to be this way and I'm gonna make a bunch more power. I just can't do it on this platform because I didn't build the engine to hold the amount of power I wanna make. I didn't build the engine to make the power it's making now, honestly. I was really thinking about 750 horsepower, but it's making a lot more power than that. And so, anyway guys, we're gonna go over this truck, what's in the build, kind of why we did it, um, maybe talk a little, bit, a little bit about what we're gonna do. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna take this, this is my truck, known as Ruby and Claw, which I'll tell you about that story here in a minute. And um, I'm gonna go compete with it. I'm really excited about this because I don't typically compete in this type of a vehicle. So I don't have the pressure of like mega, mega, mega horsepower. Cause I still am gonna have this truck be a street truck. When I get home, it's still gonna tow my camp trailer with my kids. So I gotta make this thing still reliable, still family friendly. Uh, maybe not quite as family friendly as it was before, but still really cool. So anyway, guys, uh, let's get on with this. I'm gonna get Josh in here. We're gonna talk about my truck and uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy it. Thanks, guys. All right, guys, we are here in front of my tow truck. This is my work truck. And I've taken it racing a couple of times. We've had quite a few questions and comments about this truck. Um, this truck is known around the shop as Ruby because of the color. But truth be known, its actual name is Claw. Did you know that? No, I did not. Now, here's how it got its name. <clears throat> we were going somewhere, and my nine-year-old boy said, are we taking Claw? I'm like, I think it's Claw. He's like, Claw, the truck, dude, Claw. I'm like, Claw? And so that's how the truck had its name. My nine-year-old decided its name was Claw. So this is Claw, stage name, Ruby. Okay. That, so, hey, you learn something new every day. Yep. I did not know that. <laughs> yep. So I built this truck to be a great truck. This is like around the shop. It's kind of known as like the perfect all-around vehicle. Yeah. Would you say that? Yeah, I mean, it drives everywhere. It tows whatever you want. And it does really good at the airstrip. I would imagine, I mean, it's hard to beat like that 900,000 horse do everything. I mean, I seem to love that for about a week and then I'm like <laughs> to the moon. But this is a really fun truck to drive, especially because it's so responsive even up here. Yeah, so this has our towing compounds on it. So a lot of guys ask what turbos we have. So this is an HE351. That's one of our big turbine ones, the 67 yep. millimeter turbine. But it is the stock 60 millimeter wheel on the compressor side. Yep. And we pair it with the S472 SXE. I believe you have a 125 T4 yep, on 125 there. Yep, 125 T4. And it's an 87 turbine. It's not the big, nope. big turbine. So, so it's, it's really responsive. Lot, yeah. Lots of good boost cruising. So it's very responsive. This, uh, a lot of guys ask about this truck. So I have kept this factory muffler on this, which is, I mean, we're, we're going to dyno it. I, it should do north of 900, hopefully. And that's through a factory muffler because I, I don't like drone. Like I pull, I put my kids, my wife in here. We pull our camper, dirt bikes, whatever. And the drone drives me crazy. Everybody's been in a droney truck. It's awful. Yeah. So we kept the stock muffler and I was just curious. So far it's been great. The engine is not, this is a 2006. So it came with a 5.9, which is no longer in there. No. So Josh, jo Josh <laughs> so, built so, this engine. Tell me about the engine. So first, I'm going to add, we, we had stock fueling on this truck for what, two years? Yeah. And it was phen phenomenal. And then Todd decides to put a 12 mil on it and some, what are they, 45% overs? Yeah, a little bigger. So 45% over injectors. And what did it take you, two weeks? That was fast. It, so two weeks after he does all this, the 5.9 decides to butter ring, has a ton of blow by. So we built this. This is a 20 over 6.7. It has a 6.7 crankshaft in it. And it has a set of Wagler Street Fighters. And since Todd had bought these for the late style 5.9 bowl, we went with a QSB or the wide bowl, uh, six, seven pistons. And then it has one of our cylinder heads, our push rods, um, what else? Manton valve springs. And I think that's, that's about, no. oh, 12 mil main studs. 12 main studs. And some Opti Torque, Torque Masters, which I'm really surprised that it has not had any issues at all with the head gasket. These things really have surpassed what I thought they were capable of. This one is firing half in the head, half in the block, but uh, we haven't had any issues with it. Okay, so pretty solid engine build. We also have a fluid dampener on here, right? Mm -hmm. And what do we do for transmission? You guys want me a transmission? Yeah, so Mega Cab with 900 horsepower has been a lot of fun, but surprisingly enough, Todd has yet to have to pull this out. So this is one of our 850 horsepower transmissions. It has one of our PDD billet shafts, one of our PDD stock uh, torque converters. 
It has a TCS output shaft. And other than that, it's just got a regular GPZ stack out. Nothing crazy, nothing fancy. It's a solid build with and all of our lube mods and yeah, valve and it, body. I, I mean, I, every time you drag race it, I'm surprised when it comes back. I've been leaving, I've been doing full yeah. dev launch. Yeah. Like, I have smoked tires multiple times. Yeah. It's been rock solid. Yeah. My, every time, Myra and I just cringe a little bit. But uh, other than the band adjustment and the fluid change, it, it's really taken a beating. Even the engine. I mean, just oil changes. Yeah, it's been it's great. Weird. Like last time when I checked the oil filter, there was nothing. Yep. I mean, it was it was spotless. So, so this engine, when we built it, what was our kind of horsepower goal? I, th I think you wanted 800. 800 was kind of the goal. So we yeah. kind of set it for 800 horsepower to be like as a max, like mm -hmm. kind of a little tight because I didn't want to blow by, good mileage, lot of stuff. And, th and we right away went right past it like, yeah. immediately. It was crazy how well these injectors like responded to the, the pulse width and stuff. Um, and, and I'm impressed. I, I'm really excited to tear it apart because I never envisioned this making the power it did for how long it did. And for those of you guys that don't know Todd, if you're ever towing and Todd is driving, 85, 90, cruise. sets the cruise. Let's go. EGT gauge, <laughs> not a problem to him, whatever. <laughs> so I am kind of interested to see. I remember this one being a little bit tight on the ring gap and a little tight on the pistons. So I am very for the curious power level we're at. for the power level that he's at. Yes. So this is a little thing. You're just thinking, wait a minute. Why are you pulling this engine apart? We haven't even got to that part yet. So big surprise coming up right now. We're yeah. tearing it apart because we're going to King of the Streets. All truck challenge. All truck challenge. All truck challenge. All truck challenge. So they changed the name this year. Yes. King of the Street is emissions equipped trucks, which is not oh, yeah. allowed for the 06, 07 guys. It's all the 6, 7 stuff. Um, so we're going to the all truck challenge. I, I think Todd just really wants to beat me twice in one year. So we're going to tell you. Did I beat you? You, you beat me. You see, Even though I didn't qualify. Oh. By like 200 points. I don't, this, this one, you're definitely the favorite. I'm the underdog going into the Ultra Challenge. So as is kind of my custom, Josh's too, I've got this perfect truck. It tows amazing. It beats up pretty much, I mean, I've been to drag strip twice. I mean, I have, I have put the beat down on a 555 cubic inch Dart supercharged Camaro. I think it's a beautiful car. I'm sure the black one was probably the my black favorite. pro the charge black Camaro pro charge one. Yeah, a lot of cars. I've been the fastest vehicle on the lot besides our diesel race trucks, which were faster. Yes. But of all the cars that showed up, all the race cars, none of them have been as fast as this. Granted, it's on an airstrip, a terrible traction and a real drag strip that probably would change. But on a street race, Dude. I can take anything, yeah, literally the anything. The four wheel drive is, is very advantageous at oh, that event. It's huge. So. And so it's, I mean, it's, and it's quiet. So being that so perfect, we're going to take it all apart and make it not so perfect. I think we can still keep it perfect. I mean, I, I'm going to tell you right now, there's going to be some sacrifices, but I am excited to see this kind of go. Cause this is exactly my style. You build it for one thing and then it just kind of escalates. So, in 28 days, so Todd made up his mind, what, three days ago? We got a month to go? Yeah, roughly. we were here dynoing, getting ready for the airstrip. Yeah. And we were doing Papasaurus, and I was talking, you were talking to me about it, I was like, man, this sounds cool. Is this, so first off, let's talk to people about the all-truck challenge. Mm -hmm. It is not limited to diesel trucks. No, there's one, so far one gas guy, LS Brian, he has been there every year. We need some more gas competition. If you guys are out there watching this and you have a hot gas truck and you're in the Ohio area or going to be mid-October, you should think about going to the Ultra Challenge. If like, you're, by the time this video comes out, your time has passed to sign up, so never mind. Yeah, but it's an awesome event. Um, Sarah Chapman's the one that puts it on. It's in West Salem, Ohio, uh, US Dragway 42, and it'll be all at the same place at the drag strip. And basically what Todd and I both have to do is we have to take a truck, we have to get there first, mm -hmm. which yep. if you're taking the max, already a challenge. No, I'm, just, I'm driving this out. Oh, okay, all right. So he's going to drive this, this out. This is a street truck challenge. Yeah. So you have to drag race, and you get two scores, fastest time, and then how well you do in the bracket. Then you have a dyno competition, which is just highest horsepower. They don't do the torque. Nice. Then you have uh, dirt drag, fastest time, and how well you do in the bracket. And then you have two sled pulls. Each one counts as a 500-point uh, and then you drop down from there. And then the real kicker is at any time throughout the whole weekend, she can call for the 100 mile street drive where you have to take whatever truck you brought and drive a hundred miles. And the reason why she does it at any time is so you can't change the truck. She gives you a one hour notice. So if like you're drag racing, you can pull your radials off real quick and put street tires on. So 
you have to have a setup that'll actually go out on the street. No solid blocks, none of the huge singles that never spool. It gets rid of the guys with the little tiny fuel cells. So you have to have... It's a street truck challenge. Yeah, it, it really is. Now, there are, there are definitely some trucks coming that are pretty purpose-built, not exactly... You know, it's not like, you know, the street outlaws where it's a race car on the street. These are street trucks that can be driven on the street. But this one, I consider an underdog because this literally is my daily driver. And I know your 07 is your daily driver, but you've got another backup. And you're not <laughs> driving your 07 out there. You're going to trailer it out there yes. with your tow truck. This is my tow truck. Yeah. I'm going to go race and compete in my personal tow truck, my personal daily driver. So I cannot build this as radical as as you or I mean I could I'm just choosing not to I mean I could I mean, but I'm choosing not to because I want to drive it home and have it still work when I get back yeah I, I, and I mean last year the top five trucks I'd say the top four were like purpose-built trucks and then I want to say his last name's Alderman had a Duramax like that was his daily driver it came in fifth um, I got taken out by the street drive and then I was finished uh, on the dyno as most of you guys remember the huge fireball <laughs> Uh, we're going to prevent that this year. Uh, we got a different, much different strategy. Um, but again, you, you, sometimes the just being consistent, middle of the pack, those guys do really well. So I really feel like, although there's always favorites going to the competition, it's really surprising to see how it all stacks up. I would say, in my opinion, if like David Petrick or Ben Francis show up, those would be the guys that I would kind of be like a little nervous with. Really? They're, they're definitely stiff competition. Big power yeah. on the street, really legit trucks. I mean, David's slow, but the rest of it is accurate. It works pretty good. Yeah. So this I'm hoping to do well. Like I said, I've been out drag racing it a couple of times now, and I have literally had a blast doing it. Perfect time to take it apart. Yes. It runs too good to live It runs alone. too good. Yeah. The blow by is like minimal, if any. There's no oils anywhere. There's no drips under the dang thing. It's we, too good. We're gonna tell them what we're doing to this, or do you want to leave? Yes, yeah, so let's oh. talk about. So you're gonna follow along the build. Let's do talk. Let's talk a little bit about this. Okay. And so hopefully we have some interesting footage somehow. So you're not just looking at us talking the whole time, but let's talk about it. And okay. So we have a OEM block that we drilled and tapped for 14 mil main studs and 14 mil head studs. Yep. Uh, we're gonna use a 12 valve style 14 mil main stud with no girdle. We're going to put a six seven crank in it. Obviously, another set of Wagler Street Fighters. As long as these are good, we'll just reuse them. Mm -hmm. We're going to go to a narrow bowl 6.7 piston. Why? And Talk about that. People need to know about this. Okay, so the Y bowl burns from the inside out. So you get a lot of, let's say, particulate that goes towards the edge. And it, like a lot of the 0.4.5 to 0.7 guys, you'll, you'll see like the haze. You'll put a big injector in. It's a little hazy, a little smoky off idle. Well, the problem is, is how that piston burns, whereas the re-entrant style that burns from the outside in, it kind of captures a lot of that. So it leads to a much cleaner tailpipe, which is why all the six, seven trucks have that piston bowl design. Also talk about the heat holding capacity. Yeah. With the wide bowl pistons, there's a very small crown on the whole diameter of that piston. There's not as much heat absorption in that crown as a uh, narrow bowl. There's a lot bigger uh, bowl uh, ridge there. So it allows it to accept more heat. Now, the only upside to the Y bowl piston is in a fuel only application like sled pullers, stuff like that, you will make more horsepower fuel only in a wide bowl. That has been proven, proven time and, and time again. Even 12 valves, we get, I mean, my race truck wide bowl. Yeah, yep. it's dirty, but it makes a lot more power. Yep. In a operation where you can use nitrous or water methanol or some kind of an accelerant or oxidant, it seems to be a wash. So rather than sacrifice with the kind of weaker piston bowl design, we're gonna to take Todd to the 0304 style injectors with that late six, seven bowl. I think you're gonna really like it. That's what I've always done on my trucks and it seems to be a lot cleaner. Yeah. It also kind of goes down the road without hazing, which is nice. Um, then we're gonna put this same head on. This is one of our PDD heads. Now this I, is the same head you've done how much power with? 2183. And how much fuel only? Uh, 1760. And this is what I've been using, this exact same head. I tow with this. EGT control's awesome. Spoop's great. 
This is a real good head. It's a, it's a ported head, so we do a lot of work in the exhaust side because you have access to it. We do as much as we can in the intake side. Flows really, really well. We've, we've had this, you know, tested some other heads, and this really, really surprised us how well it was and how well it stacked up to the competition. Yeah. And we've been real happy with it. And, and the, the cool part about it is we build it on an OEM Cummins head. It's nice. All new valves, all new seals, all new guides. It's a CNC port job. The big press on the valve. Yep. And, and I, I mean, if there's one guy that could test the valve seats for heat, it would be Todd. <laughs> for me, I definitely tested the power and I've been thoroughly impressed with what I've seen. Um, and then from there, we're going to use some OptiTorque 14 mil uh, head studs. I'm really excited to see how those do in a 14 mil application after we saw what they did in a 12 mil application. And realistically, Todd's threshold for power has gone up quite a bit and I feel like although 625s could definitely do it the OptiTorque's coming at a much cheaper price that's, range that's what I have on my UCC yeah. truck I've, I've done 2700 horsepower yeah. on 14 mil OptiTorques yeah. and that was a mix match set by the yeah, way yeah that's that was, that was just a, yeah I was <laughs> yeah. just putting stuff together because that's what we had so yeah. so I've been yeah like this has got the 12 mil OptiTorques at 2000 foot pounds of torque yeah. and um yeah I've been really really happy with the OptiTorques because the price point for what you get is it's the best bargain bang for your buck yeah. stud out there for a high, high performance stuff for sure. Absolutely. And then from there, we're going to go ahead and rip the tranny out. We're gonna build one of uh, Todd's, it's like our 1500 horsepower, but we're gonna do it on a little bit on the more budget side. We're gonna do a stock forward drum, stock direct drum, and then stack it with GPZs. We're gonna upgrade him to a TCS 27 spline fat input. So that means we'll have to bore a stator out. We're gonna get a DPC quad disc uh, converter a TCS fat output shaft, which means we'll have to go through his transfer case. Since we are sled pulling, dirt dragging, and drag racing, we want to make sure Todd's transfer case chain is not so. stretched, so we'll rebuild that. And then we're going to put a miraging intermediate from TCS in there. So again, all the good shafts, all the good clutch packs, all of our lube mods, we're basically trying to replicate the 07 is, is basically. So my truck, um, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to rollerize his planets, yeah. weld his ring gears, and then I am really excited that he is going full manual valve body. You've been bugging me for a long time yeah. for this. It's, it's just, it's the driver's experience. For, and I will say this, it's true. If you have a truck that's a toy, like it's not your, I mean, not, now I know for you and for me guys who it's okay, but for yeah. the average person, if you have a, a hot rod truck, that's maybe not your every single day truck, but it's, you've souped it up, it's kind of fun to drive. A full menu valve body is more fun. Especially with big turbos, because oh, yeah. it does exactly what you want. Yes. And I will say, uh, Todd's hard on trannies. I would argue that I probably have done more destruction. The destruction has really kind of calmed down with the full manual valve body. Because it does what you want. You're, you exactly know it, when it needs to happen. Yep. Not like, oh crap, it just locked. I didn't want it to. Now, now I've, my foot's in a bad position on the floor, yeah. lugging it. Now you have total control. And so you can kind of work your way around the carnage areas. Exactly. Keep it in a safe spot. and so. Doing that really is nice. And so if you have a hot rod truck, it's a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun. I, when I drive the giveaway trucks, I'm like driving around I'm like, this is so much more fun. You can just play at the lockup, spool it up, lock it, and you're right in the meat of the power. It's just, it's just awesome. So we are going full manual valve body on this truck. Which we're excited. And then we have, Sarah is very big on safety. So we have a huge checklist to do. Yeah, we got a whole laundry list. Scatter shields, drive shaft loops, cables, battery Blankets. relocations. Well, basically, we have a lot of late nights ahead of us, but to have somebody else come compete, it's a long drive. I'm excited to have Todd. And I'm excited to go to a competition where I don't feel like I need to throw the kitchen sink at everything. I, I'm excited to go as a little bit of an underdog. Cause okay, so why don't you tell the people what you're strapping on the side of this engine? Before, as an, and we'll, as we'll let them total judge. Total underdog. Yeah. Should we go with the turbo system now or should we make them wait? I don't know. It's up to you. You know, I'm gonna wait, I'm gonna wait for the turbos because I'm gonna wait for that for fab work. Just know, I still gonna have it hopefully spool quickly, and hopefully have a much much bigger top end than I have right now. No, not bad. I mean, it's great. And I feel like you're really gonna push the limit of compounds. Yes, like, I've done this. I've actually done this set 12 years ago, very similar, and it did work really well. Now that was on a 12 valve. I'm, I think with this, it'll even respond better with the very with the dynamic timing, the tuning we can do. But uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be a lot of fun. So we're gonna have some videos coming up uh, of us working on this thing, getting Josh's truck ready. We're gonna go compete at All Truck Challenge, and uh, I've never been to that event. It's pretty new. Um, it started in '15. Oh, it's so. been around a long time. 
Yeah. I was, I was wrong. I thought it was like just in last, I guess you just went last year. It was your first year, right? Yeah. So I, I spectated and I was in a pit crew in 19. I competed last year and then I'm going to yeah. compete again this year. Well, Josh is one of my favorites. I think he'll do real well. We'll see how I do. If I, can, if I do well, we'll I will, I don't know, top Stake, half. Hey, I do top half. Stakes on top. That's all I heard. That's so. right. Stakes on top. All right. All right, guys. Well, let's wrap this video up now, I think. I hope it's entertaining. I hope you're looking forward to the future builds of this thing. It's going to be awesome. And, uh, yeah, we'll check you next time. This is like, this is like the perfect reason why we're so stupid to tear this thing apart. Yeah, and this is like the cool dad, grocery getter. Oh, kids are smiling, beating yeah. everybody. I mean, I remember watching your son when we were drag racing at Junction. Like he oh. just had a blast. Oh. I I think he really thought you guys were like underdogs oh, when he showed up. He, it was pretty he was funny. He's so nervous. He's yeah. like, dude, dad, we're gonna be the slowest guys here. He's like, he's super competitive. He hates to lose. He's like. He's almost like depressed. I'm like, nah, I think we'll be okay. Yeah. Fastest guy in the lot, minus his race truck and Meyer in the Myers race yeah. truck. But um, yeah, so 964 horsepower, uh, 1,856 foot pounds of torque. And these are usable peaks. Like, yeah. I mean, people will normally see 3,000 RPM in a daily application, just like 2,600. Like, let's be realistic. My truck makes like peak horsepower and torque above 3,500. Those aren't as usable numbers as right. Todd's are. So as far as an all around do everything, this truck's been phenomenally reliable been and I've been very impressed with it. I've had more than a few people tell me, don't you touch that thing, it's perfect. It's just- it I looks, think you should. Oh, we're going to. Yeah. That's what we like do. I always say, this is like a tow truck number. All right, we need to- It is. We got to bump this those up. This is my tow truck number, yeah. that's right. It's my perfect so, tow truck number. So So yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna make it a little bit more powerful. Um, 964 horsepower. The best this has ever done is about what 980. 980, and it was like just under 2,000 foot pounds. So we're right there. These little these tires are bigger than the last ones we dyned it on, so that could hurt us a little bit. And realistically, um, I built it, so it's probably about ready to explode at this point. So. It's been perfect. We keep saying that we're gonna yeah. go break something, but I just keep going and going and going, and it just keeps taking it like a champ. So honestly, it's been great, and it's been so great, so perfect. It's time to make it better. Hopefully, I agree.